the fourth built the first St. Regis in New York City, 1904. He started there entertaining his guests, and it's been with us ever since. And some St. Regis's do it once a week. Some do it every day, like we do. And uh, obviously, we have one of the most beautiful views in the world. We have many reasons to celebrate because of that. So we, we definitely do it here every day. Now, everybody, has anybody seen a champagne savoring before? Let me ask you. No. A couple of you have, okay. So nice. Well, when, when you savor a bottle of champagne, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of it to bore you a little bit, just so you know. But you know, that way, when I teach you how to do this, you can entertain your family and friends as well. Okay. <laughs> now, the, uh, when you actually savor a bottle of champagne, you do take off the top of the bottle. So it'll actually cut it right underneath that lip right there. So just so you know, it's the top of the bottle with the cork to fly way up into the air. Now, the history of cham champagne savoring began with Napoleon, a little more than 200 years ago now, um, in Europe and his conquests and his vanquishes across Europe. Now, um, there's a very famous story about the Widow Clicquot, right? The Vu Clicquot, which is champagne we enjoy now, Vu being widow in, in French. Now, she became a widow when she was 27, and his officers tried to gain her hand in marriage by savoring bottles of champagne and impress her with this wonderful skill. Um, didn't work. She remained a widow the whole time, so they obviously weren't very impressed. Hopefully you will be, so, okay. <laughs> but uh, they, we know they savor many bottles of champagne. One is a kind of a premonition of how the battle was going to go. They'd savor before, you know, their battles, how the, see how the, the battle's going to be. They'd savor bottles afterwards as well, depending on how it went. Now, Napoleon became very famous for his saying. One of his most famous quotes, as far as champagne goes, is, Champagne and victory, you deserve it, and in defeat, you need it. So we're quite confident they say we're very often. Now, we do it here on the island, other than just carrying on this wonderful tradition, is to honor an ancient ceremony to take place on the mountain behind me over there, that pointy little one at the very end. Many of you know it's Bali High from the musical South Pacific. But its true Hawaiian name is Makana. And in English, that means gift. Now, the reason it has this name Makana is because of the Oahe ceremonies that take place there. Now, the Oahe ceremony is one of the most sacred ceremonies. They'd only celebrate if Ali'i or royalty came to visit here on the island of Kauai from the other islands, or if a family member of the islands of Ali'i graduated from Hula School near Ka'i Beach, there at the end of the road. Now, it'd be a week-long celebration, and it'd culminate with this ceremony. And uh, to have a visual of it, after I tell it to you, if you like, inside our bar at the far end, you'll see a mural, and that's the painting of the Oahu. Now they prepare for the Iwaki by cutting down two different types of trees. One is the how and the other is the papala tree. Both of these trees are long slender trunks and their most unique property is that they're hollow inside. So once they cut them down and dried them for about eight months, they became very, very light. It allowed them to fill one end with bark that they had soaked in kukui nut oil. And voila, guess what? It's now very flammable, right? <laughs> so a couple chosen kane would take their, or men, would take these, these firebrands Climb up the side of Makana, up to the top, about 1,100 feet in elevation, wait till nightfall, light them on fire, and throw them off the edge. Well, on the side of Makana that faces the ocean, it's concave, pretty much straight up and down. So those trade winds get concentrated right there, rushing up the side of Makana. So those firebrands, when they throw them, would actually be lifted up into the air, twisting and turning, before they begin their slow descent, floating back down to the surface of the, uh, the water. Now, it sometimes take up to a mile out into the ocean before they'd actually make it back down. So on they flow. Now, the people would paddle out in the outrigger canoes to watch this spectacle. And of course, the Kane there in their canoes would want to impress their, their women by paddling out and try to catch these as they fell back to the earth, right? These firebrands. Now, if they were lucky enough to catch one, they would then show their love and devotion to each other by branding each other with those burning firebrands. So that is the Iwaki ceremony, one of the most sacred. The last time that it was celebrated with Ali'i in presence was in 1856 when Queen Emma visited here on the island. So, it's been a long time, but it's something we want you to be aware of as we have one of the most spectacular views of Makana and the bay where they used to take place. Now, before I say, is there anybody celebrating a special event that I could honor as well and wish you happy birthdays or wedding? wedding? At a wedding? Yeah? Well, congratulations. Newlyweds, then? Honeymoon. Honeymoon, awesome. Honeymoon over here, too? Right here? Two couples. Okay, wow. Awesome. Honeymoon. An anniversary? How many years, man? Three. Three year anniversary. Good. Us two. Yeah, two. Honeymoon as well. Yeah, two years. 
Two, three years. Three years in. One year here. And one year there. Yeah. A birthday. Oh, your dog's birthday. <laughs> and the name of the dog? It's Kipper. Kipper. Not able to be with us tonight, though. Yes, sir. Thirtieth anniversary down there. We all know who to go talk to. You okay? know how to make a lot. Well then, in your honor for the thirty years, three and just starting out. We appreciate you being with us tonight. We will go ahead and savor this bottle and wish for a beautiful evening and a beautiful day to come tomorrow. So, from today and forevermore in Hawaiian, off with the top. No keila, amaloa. There we are. Mahalo. As I said, I'm happy to teach you this skill and go home and entertain your family and friends. You don't need a wonderful, beautiful saber like this to do it, okay? You can do it with the back of your chef's knife that you have in your kitchen. But I tell you, once you start opening a bottle this way, the other way, right? Anyway, thank you.